in the mana, in the rayo, in the car, and the tongue, the road runner, see the mark, tena kaute, tena kaute, tena kaute. So, ladies and gentlemen, Professor, kia ora and good evening. It's my very great pleasure to be here, firstly, as Mayor of Lala Hutt, but also as a local resident and concerned resident of this great Wellington region. Um, I was invited along by Robin, and I want to congratulate you, Robin and Pam, for organising this uh, event. I think it's a great turnout for a Friday night, fantastic uh, turnout, and obviously it is an issue of concern. As we know, uh, we're extremely lucky to uh, have the professor come along uh, tonight and talk to us. Just prior to introducing them, though, I do want to thank and acknowledge the transition movement, particularly the one that I know of here in the hut, that is doing such good work. I've been to a number of uh, their uh, workshops and their lunches. The workshops I can tell you, just so that you uh, are aware, uh, the Marius and I from attending a transition workshop now as we have reduced our waste to the landfill by 75% of the so we recycle, we reuse, and we compost. We've got four big compost around our properties now, and it's amazing. And I'm out there um, supporting getting the community in behind those sorts of things. We really do need to make sure the community uh, buys into this as well, because it's just so important. Enough from me. It's uh, my very great honor to uh, introduce Professor uh, Guy McPherson, retired. Um, from the Arizona University, where he kept a very senior position, but he has given that position up now to become an international presenter and educator on the issues facing us as a planet. So let's put a, a very warm welcome to the uh, We've got a few people who are hard of hearing and may not hear yeah. you at all without the aid of the microphone. So if we can get one of them to work, what? that would be that would be yeah. good. Just um, give it a little bit longer. Is um, Juanita about? Because it's her equipment. I'm not familiar which is the volume switch. All right. I'm afraid now that you can hear me, you're not going to like it at all, given what I have to say. Everything I'm going to say today, I have said and written at my website, Nature Bats Last, which is at guymcpherson.com, and most recently and comprehensively in my latest book, Walking Away from Empire. If you want a copy of the page proofs of that book, just send me an email message. All my contact information is at guymcpherson.com. Because I think we're headed for a world in which money doesn't matter. Without money, we'll all be rich. I want to talk about cost because I'd like to get the bad news first and move on to the good news. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for their finding that with their fourth assessment in late 2007, we were headed to a one degree warmer world by the end of the century. Never mind that we were eight-tenths of a degree warmed already by that time. 
One degree is catastrophic, by the way. Beyond one degree C may elicit rapid, unpredictable, and nonlinear responses that could lead to extensive ecosystem damage. This is perhaps one of the greatest cover-ups of all time. We've known about this for 22 years, and yet we allowed a mainstream neoclassical economist to convince us that two degrees was horrific, when in fact one degree is horrific. Now, I, I can't really understand why we trust mainstream neoclassical economists for anything. Much less something as important as the living planet. Is this thing coming and going? I'm not going to hold them both. <laughs> you can't convince me. Anybody who wasn't hard of hearing before we got here is going to be by the time we leave, aren't we? Okay, so one degrees is truly catastrophic regardless of what we've heard and we're there. Hadley Center for Meteorological Research, hardly a left-wing organization. They were, this organization was established by Margaret Thatcher in Great Britain and they say that we're headed for a two degree warmer world by 2100. Positive feedbacks resulting from two degrees warming will lead quickly and inevitably to six degrees. And the last time it was six degrees warmer on this planet, there were snakes the size of yellow school buses living in the Amazon, and the largest mammal on the planet was the size of a shrew, a mammal about this big. It's because large-bodied mammals, such as us, cannot maintain our body temperatures at wet bulb temperatures that are so high. In addition, even though we experience frequently six degree fluctuations when we go in and out of buildings. The really catastrophic effect of warming is going to be on ecosystems. At six degrees warmer, in fact, probably by four degrees warmer, the oceans are so acidified they don't support plankton. Plankton is the base of the food chain. It's not the pack and save. Plankton provide 50% of the oxygen on this planet. Uh, and oceans without plankton is a catastrophic scenario. And we're there well before we get to six degrees warming. United Nations Environment Program relying on more data and more sophisticated models as with each one of these assessments that comes later concludes that we're headed to a three and a half degree warmer world by 2100. That certainly puts the final nail in the coffin of the human experience. Hadley Center for Meteorological Research comes along a year after that previous assessment and says four is the new two and it's coming by mid-century. I have really bad news. Half a screen left. And I'm going to fill it up. Consistent with the Hadley Center's assessment of four degrees warming by mid-century, Global Carbon Project and Copenhagen Diagnosis at the time of the Copenhagen climate meetings in November 2009 concluded we're headed for a six or seven degree warmer world, respectively. International Energy Agency and their World Energy Outlook put out always the day after Thanksgiving. We call it Black Friday in the United States because it's the biggest shopping day of the year. So nobody notices any other news. They conclude we're headed for a three and a half degree warmer world by 2035. United Nations Environment Program comes along and says consistent with that finding, we're headed for more than five degrees warmer by 2050. Then the International Energy Agency in their latest World Energy Outlook says we're headed six degrees by 2035. Wow. This is the biggest news you've never heard. The mainstream media won't cover any of this. Governments of the world are looking the other way. It's just too terrifying. In addition, there's no politically viable approach to dealing with climate change or energy decline. Do you think your prime minister is going to come on television and say what we really have to do is completely collapse the industrial economy and it looks like the only way we can reduce carbon emissions enough to save our species beyond another generation? I don't think that's going to sell with the voters. The really bad news is that none of these assessments include positive feedbacks or so 